I'm going to open up TechScope. So you can see here that I have the user interface of an oscilloscope. I don't have any channels turned on because this is on my computer. This is not using an oscilloscope. So I'm going to do a default setup. Uh, just to kind of show that we're starting from, from zero. I'm going to add a scope. Uh, so the first scope is on my local network. Um, I'm going to type in what the IP address is. And I'm going to click connect. So I've connected to that scope. We can see here that it's MSO64. So this is a six series mixing oscilloscope with four channels. So it's brought in all four of those channels. You can see here channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. Um, I'm working from home, so I don't have any interesting signals. So just for demonstration purposes, I have uh, brought in just the, um, the oscilloscope noise. I have maxed out my vertical scale as much as I can, so I'm trying to show the noise as large an amplitude as I can. So I've brought in all four channels of that first oscilloscope. Let's bring in another one. Um, so I'm going to type in the IP address of scope number two on my network. Uh, let's uh, pull that in. That scope is a five series, ch eight channel scope, so MSO58. Uh, and all I had to do there again was just type in the IP address, and we're going to pull in all eight channels of that data. You can see here that my horizontal view is different. So purposefully, I set up two different record lengths. I set up a smaller record length on my six series scope and a larger on my five series scope. And the trigger position uh, is central. So in both of those, I set the trigger position to be the middle of the acquisition. Uh, we can trigger off of any signal on all of our oscilloscopes and pull them in together on the same trigger point. So you can see here, I've got channels one, two, three, and four from the first scope. Channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the second scope. Using this uh, awesome uh, user interface from the 4, 5, and 6 series scopes, uh, I can right, I can combine channels. So we can do an overlaid view of those. So I've uh, overlaid channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 from my 6 series scope. You can look up here in the top and see the four of those are now on top of each other. I'm going to right click and ungroup those just to move it back to what we were at. Um, and I could do the same, right? I can, uh, I can, I can change these around. So I'm going to now move channel two before channel one. We see the blue is now before yellow. So I have complete control after the acquisition of these channels to understand the data exactly how I want to. Using tech scope, now that I have this data imported, I can do measurements on any of these channels. So I'm going to click here on the uh, the first oscilloscope, so scope one, channel one, and I'm going to add a measurement on, let's say, amplitude. So here we see the, the measurement show up. Now I'm going to click here on oscilloscope two, right, S22, which is scope two, channel two, and let's add an amplitude measurement on that. So you can see that very quickly I can add measurements to any of the existing data and it's easy to delete those and get rid of those as quickly as we want. Now I've, I've brought in 12 channels of data. Let's say that now that I see those 12 channels I'm only interested in two and my, my, uh, my view here feels kind of cluttered. So let's say I, in scope one I'm only interested in channel two. Let's get rid of channels one, three, and four. Let's leave channel two open. And in scope two, I'm only interested in, let's say, channel seven, right? So I'm going to close out all the channels except for seven. In just a couple seconds, I have the information that I'm curious about. Again, I can pull in some measurements. Let's show the minimum on channel seven from oscilloscope two. And up here, let's pull in whatever the maximum is from oscilloscope one, channel number two. Um, the data that I had already pulled in, that data is not gone. So let's pull back in channels one, two, three, and four. Scope two, let's pull in channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right? So we're back to that original view that we had just in a couple of seconds. So all the data I've imported is still here, live, easier for me to analyze. We can add a new math, um, which would be the um, ability for us like to 
multiply channel seven and channel eight, right? So this new orange signal down here in the bottom, this is power, right? It would be the uh, current times the voltage. Let's say we had a current probe set up on channel seven, a voltage probe connected to channel eight. Math one would be power. So any of the data that has now been brought in, we can quickly make analysis and measurements on those. Depending on the licenses that we decided to purchase uh, and measurements, we've got the jitter, DJA package, power, inverter, in inverter motor drive analysis, or digital power management. So it depends on what applications it is that we're concerned about, but very quickly we can open up and show exactly what it is the application that we're concerned about so here i can click on an npj and understand what the npj measurement is we can go into amplitude uh you know learn more about the bit low measurement and exactly what that is and what that looks like very easy for me to refresh the data so here i can click refresh waveforms and it's going to go back to the scope and pull in whatever the latest waveform is, right? Let's say that my first setup was wrong, very easily, quickly pull in whatever the, uh, the newest data is. Uh, up here in utility and IO, using tech scope remote control, when I turn this on, I can now use tech scope, right? So this is the PC version of this software. I can use this PC version of the software with a live connection to my scopes to control the vertical, the horizontal, and the trigger menus of my scopes. So using this software user interface here on my computer with my mouse and my keyboard, I can now control up to the four scopes that are connected over the network, and I can set them all to the same settings, which is really incredible for when I'm trying to uh, you know, like understand 22 power rails, 24 power rails, 30 different uh, signals that all need the same trigger. I can make all those settings the same very quickly, just a couple of clicks here with my scope. Um, also really easy to label and understand exactly which set of signals come in from which scope. Um, using the, um, the new four, five, and six series the oscilloscope user interface, like we showed earlier, it's really easy to set up the channels in the way that we want. I can click and drag to get them off of my display. Um, I can, you know, make make things look exactly the way that I want them to, um, as if we were working on um, a iPad, iPhone. Really easy to use, well-designed software user interface that's finally made its way to oscilloscopes. 